Welcome back. President Cyril Ramaphosa has received widespread backlash for claiming that the country does not have enough qualified town planners. He was speaking during his question and answer session in Parliament on Thursday. For some reaction on this, I'm joined by Sabelo Koniwe, who is a provincial leader at Infrastructure South Africa in Pumalanga. Sabelo, thank you so much for making time for us this afternoon. When you listened to what the president said about town planners this week, what did you think? <laughs> yeah, no, thank you, Clement, and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity and uh, uh, greetings to all the viewers. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's a statement that has received quite a wide uh, um, uh, uh, negative feedback from uh, planners. I am an urban planner myself, and uh, I think uh, the key issue from planners is that uh, perhaps uh, South Africa's issue is not the lack of planners, but really just uh, um, how the planning profession is governed and promoted and opportunities for planners to actually participate in, in the states, especially as far as planning uh, in all three levels of uh, or three spheres of government is concerned. So. Um, yeah, it was um, uh, rather, I, I, I think, a, a, a very shocking, uh, uh, you know, proclamation. But uh, I think generally it reflects the fact that it is a critical skill that the country does need. So perhaps the, the, the focus should be largely on that and not necessarily that the uh, limited uh, qualified planners. In fact, um, I, I was a lecturer at that for about three years and I still keep in touch with most of the students um, from there. I know the challenges that uh, are there in terms of planning work reservations. Um, those are issues that planners have been raising quite uh, a number of times with SECPLAN, which is our organization, our statutory body. Mm. And um, these are issues that uh, have been, I think, in, in a sense, been addressed, but planners feel like um, this is being addressed in a very or rather slow uh, pace. So um, that, that is the view, uh, mm -hmm. at least from most. Planners. Yeah. Is there no organization that represents town planners? Has it said anything? You've mentioned that uh, perhaps the issue is, is how this is governed and promoted. And I imagine that's the kind of institution that would carry that responsibility. Yes, uh, you are quite correct. So uh, I've mentioned just now uh, the South African Council for Planners is a statutory body where all planners in the country are registered. Um, to practice planning, and um, that uh, is also the, the body that uh, accredits uh, 11 of our institutions which have planning schools in the country. Um, and that body has the responsibility um, to develop the guidelines and frameworks, including the professionalization of the profession. Um, and that's, that's the, the, the critical role player, I think, that uh, I, I bring forward to say that uh, planners have been raising quite a number of these issues with SECPLAN. There has been a lot of efforts from SECPLAN uh, side, which I can give credit for. But I think the outcry from, from planners is that uh, these are taking rather too, uh, too long to, to materialize. So uh, one of the critical issues, as I've mentioned, is that uh, planners feel like uh, planning is not a protected profession as far as work is concerned. What that means is that uh, you have quite a lot of uh, professionals practicing work that should be ideally reserved for planners. Uh, your architects, civil engineers, surveyors, um, and other professions are able to do planning work, mm. whereas planners can't actually do work for any of those fields. As you would know, Clement, um, one can submit a building plan if they're not registered with SACAP in, in architecture. Mm. So planners are really uh, crying around around those kind of issues. Uh, but there are other issues as well, which uh, um, I believe SECPLAN is engaging with national government, particularly COFTA, um, to address the issues around how to transform um, the, the incorporation of planning into management positions, particularly uh, roles that have to do with planning work in government. Yeah. Uh, it's not the first time that government claims that we don't have uh, the necessary skills for, uh, for, 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 for other things. I mean, in 2020, for instance, we welcomed the Cuban Medical Brigade. I think 217 doctors arrived in the country to quote-unquote augment the country's resources because they have strength in community medicine, an area where we are weak in. And you had doctors 
who said, but we are here. And, and not only that, um, we have so many unemployed nurses and doctors who are readily available to bolster, and even at the time, our response to COVID-19. And the Cuban doctors were not really offering a service for free, so we were paying them for it. And then we also have uh, the Minister of Water and Sanitation. At the time, Minister Lindy Wasusulu welcoming 24 Cuban engineers who were brought in to improve government's efforts to water delivery and related services. And engineers said, but we are here. So what do you think is the issue here, Savelo? Does government not know of the skills that we have in this country? Because often when it rushes to get the skills outside, We've got organizations coming up and saying we've got our own people that are unemployed here and they are readily available. Yeah, no, I mean, that's quite correct. That, that's actually one of the key issues that planners are worried about is the fact that uh, to proclaim that there isn't enough planners when there are many unemployed uh, planners in the state could potentially uh, be also pushing planners to the side in terms of really playing a role in the state. So that, that is uh, a bit of a concern. Um, but I, I certainly do think that uh, South Africa doesn't have an issue of uh, qualified planners. There's quite a, a number of, of, of good planners that have come from the country, most of which uh, are leaving the profession, which is quite concerning because of the issues that I've mentioned. Um, in terms of the difficulty of practicing as a planner and also the challenges of uh, planning roles and responsibilities being largely politicized in, in government. So a lot of planners are leaving the profession um, into a private sector and uh, a lot of uh, planners moving also into the, di the digital uh, uh, space in terms of companies that are doing telecommunication who value actually the knowledge and skills of planners. You have a lot of planners that are are playing the role of site acquisitions and so forth for, for our telecommunication companies. So it is a, a concern and it would be sad to see um, a, a similar development happen uh, in particular for planners because I think planning more so now is quite important yeah. to actually assist in driving our country's development and growth. As you would know, planners work in uh, quite a vast uh, uh, area of, 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 of areas in, in planning and policy. Um, and as we can see, issues around climate change, infrastructure development, and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. This requires our planners to be hands-on. And if planners are being pushed to the margins, um, it's, a, it's a concerning development. In fact, in terms of the Migration um, uh, Act, um, planning is listed there as one of the critical skills. So I think we're sitting at something like uh, number 85 or so. Um, uh, which indicates the, the, the importance of prioritizing the role players play, uh, or play in, 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 in government. So, yeah, that is quite a concerning development. Yeah, and I mean, we need to avoid what we've seen, even around the impact of disasters, like what happened in Kozulu Natal, and it's town planners that play a critical role um, in ensuring that. Sabelo Koniwe, thank you for making time. If you missed what the president said, um, on Thursday around town planners. Take a listen. This is possibly, as I said, it's existential for our nation, for our country, and we therefore need to treat it with the seriousness that it deserves. Largely because we can see the damage that climate change is causing to various parts of our country. On the east, it's floods. On the west of our country, it's drought. And both these natural uh, occurrences are causing a lot of damage to the livelihoods of people and to our economy. So it's therefore important. So it's going to cost a lot of money. That is why we're going to be focusing, even as we go to COP26, 27 rather, in Egypt, in a few days, I believe, uh, in a week or so. When we go to COP27, we will be seeking to focus on the issue of assistance the support that we must get, and the mitigation process, and how we are going to, to, to adapt. So we are on a path that is going to give rise to a lot of angst and uh, doubt and uh, an argument, but we have to embark on this journey together as South Africans.